Dilsa Momo and I am here to present a short video presentation on the topic Tinesis. Firstly, the outline, we will look through introduction, epidemiology, susceptible host etiology, mode of transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, PM lesions, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, line of treatment, prevention and control, and we'll have a short revision on what we have learned today and with some references. Now directly going to the introduction. Tenesis is an infectious parasitic disease in both human and animals caused by tapeworms of the genus Tenia through contaminated beef or pork. The most important causative agents are Tenia solium, pork tapeworm, Tenia segneta, beef tapeworm, and their respective larval stages, Sister carcass cellulose and Sister carcass bovis. Teniasis in livestock is caused by adult or larval stages of tapeworms. The infection caused by the larval stages of tenia is called cystocarcosis. So we will be mainly focusing on the two types of tenia, uh, which is the tenia solium and tenia segneta. These are the images uh, of the tenia species. This is a tenia solium and another tenia solium and tenia segneta. This is the morphological diagram of a, a tapeworm. So we can see there are many parts of uh, parts in the tapeworm, namely there are rostellum, hook, scolex, sucker, neck, and proglutid of three types, which are the immature, mature, and gravid proglutid. Now moving to the epidemiology, Tinesis is endemic in. Southeast Asia, Africa, Europe, Central and South America. It is very common in places where raw beef or pork is consumed and where sanitation is poor. It is also very common in Bhutan with prevalence of neurocystocarcosis caused by tenia solium, which is one of the leading cause of deaths of foodborne illness. So it can be seen that uh, this disease tenesis is very much uh, occurrence in Bhutan. Now the susceptible host, it can uh, the host of the tenesis, it can be pigs, cattle, yaks, sheep, and it can also affect humans. Other animals are also affected, but these are the most important uh, hosts that are affected. And now the etiology. This is the basic etiology of the uh, species. Tinea segineta and Tinea solium and other species are also present. It falls under the kingdom Animalia, Phylum, Letihelminths, which is the endoparasites, class Cystodes, which means tapeworms, order Cyclophilidae, family Tinidae, genus Tinea. Species uh, we will be focusing on, on is Tinea segineta and Tinea solium. This is another image of Tinea solium. Now this table will summarize uh, the etiology of tenesis and cystocarcosis with its intermediate host and final host. So I'll explain the two important ones. So the adult tapeworm will be known as the tenia solium and the intermediate host is pigs, the final host is men and the larval stage is known as the cystocarcus cellulose and the larval site will be the muscles present in the mislip work. And in case of tenia segneta, the intermediate host is cattle, final host is men, larval stage sister carcosis bovis, and it is also found in the muscles of measly beef. There are other species of tenia, namely tenia multiceps, tenia hyda, tegenia, uh, and uh, tenia ovis. These are the intermediate hosts. In case of this uh, species, the final host is different. And these are the larval stages of the uh, different types of different species of tenia and the larval site. Mode of transmission of uh, teniasis it can be transmitted through ingestion of intestine sister carcassi through undercooked beef, tenia segneta, or pork, tenia solium, ingestion of food, water, or vegetables contaminated with eggs of the worm. And it can be also transmitted through infection through contaminated hands. Now 
I'll briefly run through the pathogenesis of tenesis. Adult tapeworm causes tenesis in men, the definite host, and larval stage cystocarcosi cellulose causes cystocarcosis in pigs and wild boars, which are the intermediate host. Infected pig with uh, C cell so cellulosis is called measly pork. The adult tapeworms remain in small intestine of men. Length of tapeworm is 3 to 5 meters and can survive about 25 years inside intestine. Pig occurs infection through ingestion of eggs or private segments secreted in feces of men. Oncospores escape from eggs and attach to the intestinal mucosa with the help of hooks. They penetrate the intestinal wall and enter the lymphatic and veins and further into muscles and various visceral organs. The maturation of cystocarcus cellulose takes place in 3 weeks to 2 months. Life cycle becomes complete while men eat raw or undercooked meat, which is the misly pork. The skull is gets attached to the mucosa of small intestine and mature in 5 to 10 weeks. So this diagram will briefly show uh, the pathogenesis or the life cycle of tinea solium. Now the clinical findings. Most people are asymptomatic or have mild symptoms. Tapeworms causes digestive problems causing abdominal pain, anorexia, weight loss, diarrhea and upset stomach. Intermediate stage of tapeworm causes myocystis, myocarditis, pneumonia, and heart failure. Larva stage of tenesis. The larva stage in the brain causes nervous signs declining in the site of its location. Larva, however, may elicit intense immunologic reactions as they travel through and cause severe disease when they settle in extra intestinal sites. Now the post-mortem lesions. The tapeworm cyst uh, will be found in predilection sites. This is the most important post-mortem lesions uh, which can help in confirming the disease. The adult tapeworm in the final host cause gastroenteritis, ulcers and wounds due to hooks of the scolex. Not only does it cause cyst but also cause other uh, problems. These are the images of the cyst found in different organs. You can see cysts in heart, veins, and other organs. Uh, this shows a clear image of cysts in case of a pig and in cattle. Now diagnosis. Adult tapeworm infections are diagnosed by identifying eggs or gravid proglottid segments in stool. Larva disease is best identified by Imaging studies such as brain CT or MRI and for some species, serologic tests are also required. So these are the confirmatory tests for the disease. Now differential diagnosis. Tenesis should be differentiated from cholecystosis, cystocarcosis, gastroenteritis, irritable bowel syndrome and keratosis. Line of treatment. Uh, the line of treatment we can mention is albendazole at the rate of 5 to 10 mg per kg for in case of cattle, horse, sheep and pig, goat and in case of cat and dog it should be given 25 to 50 mg per kg body weight for 3 to 5 days. Another one is niclosamide at the rate of 50 to 100 mg per kg for cattle, horse, sheep, pig and goat and for cat and dog 75 to 100 mg per kg body weight and press the contile at the rate of 5 to 7.5 mg per kg body weight for talking cat. Surgical removal is required for ocular and superficial cystocarcosis. So surgical removal can also be done. Surgical removal of the symptoms producing cyst. So cyst can be uh, removed surgically. Now, prevention and control of prophylaxis. Uh, TNSs can be uh, prevented and controlled through proper cooking of the meat at the temperature not less than 60 degrees Celsius, heat treatment sterilized by heating or boiling at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Hygiene, effective enforcement of meat inspection to avoid consumption of tapeworm seized infected meat. Avoid feeding sweets 
or garbage to the pigs. Clean the meat before consumption. Awareness campaign to the meat consumers. Now we have come to the end of our presentation. So to quickly revise on what we have learned. Today we have looked through introduction, epidemiology, susceptible host, etiology, mode of transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, PM lesions, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, line of treatment, and prevention and control of teniasis. These are the references I have referred to. Thank you for your attention.